Hello and welcome to Algebra 2 Lesson 46. In this video, we're going to learn about special factoring. So we did a lesson on this back in Algebra 1, but again, I think it's very important to review this because you're going to come across factoring scenarios that occur so frequently that it's super beneficial for you to memorize the generic formulas. And this can be used on your homework, your test, or something important like the SAT or the ACTs where they're timed and you have a certain amount of things and you just have to be as fast as you can. So I'm gonna start out by talking about the difference of two squares. So this is something that goes back and forth. We learn it when we talk about special products and then we learn it when we talk about special factoring. So if you see something squared minus something else squared, it factors into, you have the first thing that's squared goes in the first position here and here. The second thing that's squared goes in the position here and here, the second position of each. So you can remember first goes with first. So this is first, goes in the first position of each. Second goes with second. So this is second, it goes in the second position of each. And then the sign is going to be different each time. So you have a plus here and then a minus here. Now you could change that around and put the minus here and the plus here, wouldn't affect the answer. And this is based on the fact that if I do FOIL, let's say I have the quantity X plus Y times the quantity X minus Y, what's gonna happen is those two middle terms are gonna cancel each other. X times X is X squared. The outer X times negative Y is minus XY. The inner Y times X is plus XY. And the last Y times negative Y is minus Y squared. So you can see that this is going to cancel and you're left with X squared minus Y squared. So if I see something squared minus something else squared, I can quickly factor it using this technique. So let's, let's just say I saw something like, I don't know, x squared minus four. We know x squared is a perfect square, but is four. Well, of course, four is two squared. So make this simple on yourself and just rewrite this as two squared. Let's say this is two squared. So then following this format, and just set up the parentheses. I know one of these is plus and one of these is minus. The first thing that's squared, in this case that's x, appears again in the first position of each. So whatever squared is gonna appear in the first position of each. And then the second thing that's squared, in this case it's y, is going to appear in the second position of each. So we've got a y there and a y there. Here what's squared is two. So that would appear here and here. And again, from your special products formulas, you know that the quantity x plus two times the quantity x minus two would be x squared minus two squared or x squared minus four. Okay, you can go back and forth between the two. So let's say I gave you something like four x squared minus one and I told you to factor it. Well, the first thing is there's two terms only and there's a minus sign. So I'm immediately thinking the difference of two squares. So what I'm gonna ask myself is, is this a perfect square? Yeah, I could write this as two x, that quantity squared, and then is this a perfect square? Yeah, one squared is one. So I could write two X that quantity squared minus one squared. So if I transform this into this, I can use my little formula. Set up your parentheses. This is how I remember it. Put your plus and your minus. Whatever is squared first goes in the first position of each. Two X is what's squared. So put a two X here and a two X here. Whatever is squared second goes in the second position of each. And that's it. I've got the quantity 2x plus one times the quantity 2x minus one. If you wanna use FOIL and check it, 2x times 2x is 4x squared. The outer 2x times negative one and the inner one times 2x would cancel. You'd have positive 2x and negative 2x, that's gone. The last is one times negative one, which is negative one or minus one. So you have 4x squared minus one, and you start out with four x squared minus one. So we got a very, very simple and fast approach to factor this. All right, let's take a look at another one. So we have 25 P squared minus 16. So again, two terms only and a minus sign. So immediately you should be thinking about the difference of two squares. So is 25 a perfect square? Yeah, it's five times five or five squared. We know P squared is a perfect square. So I could write this as five P, in parentheses, squared. Then minus, is 16 a perfect square? Yes, it's four squared. So what I can do is I can factor this. 
Again, set up your parentheses, put a plus and a minus, and then whatever squared in the first position, in this case that's 5p, is going to go here and here. Whatever squared in the second position is going to go here and here. First position goes in the first position of each. Second position goes in the second position of each, and we get our answer. This factors into the quantity 5p plus 4 times the quantity 5p minus 4. All right, for the next one, we're looking at 169x to the fourth power minus 100. So again, two terms, and you got a minus sign, so we're looking for the difference of two squares. So 169 is what? It's 13 squared. So let me write 13 there. And x to the fourth power is what? I can really think about this, again, using the rules of exponents as x squared squared. Okay? So what I want to write is 13x squared. And then this thing right here inside of parentheses, the 13x squared, would be squared. This mathematically is the same as this, right? I just rewrote it. Then minus, we know 100 is 10 squared. So let's write 10 and that's squared. So to factor this again, set up your parentheses. Very, very easy. One is plus, one is minus. Let me put minus and then plus. The order doesn't matter. And then whatever is squared in the first position, here it's 13x squared is going to go first in each case. So 13x squared, and then 13x squared. And then whatever is squared in the second position, in this case that's 10, is going to go in the second position of each. So a 10 here, and a 10 here. So we factored this as the quantity 13x squared minus 10 times the quantity 13x squared plus 10. All right, so let's look at the next one, which is where we talk about perfect squared trinomials. So we all know from special products that the quantity x plus y squared turns into x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. So obviously we can factor and go from x squared plus 2xy plus y squared to the quantity x plus y squared. Now if I have x squared minus 2xy plus y squared, I can factor that into x minus y, that quantity squared. Let's take a look at an example of this. We have 50x squared plus 60x plus 18. So let's say I tell you to factor this. Now, when you look at 50, you would say, well, that's not a perfect square. When you look at 18, you'd say, well, that's not a perfect square. So you might give up on this idea of it being a perfect square trinomial. But before you do that, just realize that everything here is divisible by 2. So if I started out by just pulling a 2 out, inside the parentheses that have 25x squared plus 30x plus 9. So now, if I think about what's going on, I know 25 is a perfect square, and I want to check this. 25 is a perfect square. It's 5 squared. x squared is a perfect square, so I could write this as 5x, that amount, squared. Now, the next thing you would check is to say, is 9 a perfect square? Well, yeah, 9 is 3 squared. Okay. Now I would check, is this middle term 2 times this times this? 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 5 is 30 times x is 30x. So 2 times 5x times 3 does equal 30x. So it all checks out. So that means I can factor this into what? 2 times, it's going to be this guy right here, 5x, plus this guy right here, 3, and this quantity is squared. So whatever is squared here, plus whatever is squared here, that quantity is squared. Very easy to set up once you know that you have a perfect square trinomial. So again, we get 2 times the quantity 5x plus 3 squared. All right, let's take a look at another one. So we have 49n to the fourth power minus 42n squared plus 9. So the first thing I'm going to look at is the n's. So 49n to the fourth power, I know 49 is a perfect square, it's 7 squared. I know n to the fourth power is a perfect square, it's n squared squared. So I could write 7n squared squared. For this 9, I could write 3 squared. So, so far, everything checks out. Now, again, I want to think about, I have a negative here, or a minus, whatever you want to think about. Is 2 times this right here, 7n squared, times this right here, 3, equal to 42n squared? Forget about the negative. So, 2 times 7 is 14. 14 times 3 is 42. 42 times n squared is 42n squared. So that's good to go there. You just need to remember the minus sign. So 
with this formula when I factor, I have something minus something squared. And what it is, is this is first term here that was squared, which is seven n squared minus, because of the minus sign here, the last term that's squared. In this case, that's three. So you get the quantity seven n squared minus three, and this is squared. All right, let's take a look at another one. So we have nine x squared minus 24 x plus 16 minus y squared. So you might look at this problem if I told you to factor it and try to do something like factoring by grouping because it's a four term polynomial. But you can't factor it that way. You need to use a little trick here. So I have to show this to you because you probably won't see it right away. If I was to enclose this part only inside of parentheses, let's say we have the quantity nine x squared minus 24 x plus 16, then minus y squared. Now I can factor this because this part right here is a perfect square trinomial. So let's go ahead and factor this. This is nine x squared. So this I could write as three x squared. This is 16, so that's four squared. And then for the middle, I have three x times four, which is 12 x times two, which is 24 x. So that matches up. So all I need to do is say that I have what? Three x, this guy right here. I have a minus right there, so minus, and then four, this guy right here. So the quantity three X minus four squared minus Y squared. Now, what do I have here? I have the difference of two squares. I have something squared minus something else squared. So let's further factor this into the quantity three X minus four plus Y times the quantity three X minus four minus Y. Now, if you go back and you multiply these together, you will end up with 9x squared minus 24x plus 16 minus y squared. All right, for the final section, we wanna talk about the sum or difference of cubes. So something like the difference of cubes, you have x cubed minus y cubed. So this is gonna factor into the quantity x minus y times the quantity x squared plus xy plus y squared. So the main thing to remember here is that if you have a negative here, the first sign you see is gonna be negative. With the sum of cubes, you have x cubed plus y cubed. Everything is the same except for the sign here and here. The final sign is always plus and either. So the way I always remembered this is that the first sign is always gonna match, the second sign is not gonna match, and the last sign is always positive. So in other words, if this is minus, this is minus, flip the sign, it's plus, this is always plus. If this is plus, this is gonna match, so it's plus, Flip the sign because it's not going to match, it's minus, and then this is always plus. So that's how I personally remember it. Now, for this part right here, the multiplication, it's pretty easy. You just have an x and a y, and then you have squared and squared at the end and x, y in the middle. So not too hard to memorize that. It's just something you have to practice over and over and over again. And then, you know, 15 or 20 of these, you pretty much have it down packed. But I can tell you, unless you do a lot of problems you know, over time, it's something that you will forget and have to revisit. So let's take a look at some examples. All right, so let's say you had something like negative 250x cubed minus 128. So forget about the negative for a second. Is 250 a perfect cube? No, it is not, okay? And if you didn't know that off the top of your head, you could factor it and figure out that it's not. But a lot of you will see right away that what? You could pull out a two and you would have 125, which is a perfect cube. You could pull out a two from here and you'd have 64, which is a perfect cube. So a lot of these problems are just gonna set up nicely for you. So instead of just pulling out a two, let's pull out a negative two, make it easier on ourselves. So we'll pull out a negative two and we'll be left with 125 X cubed plus, cause I'm pulling out a negative, 64. Let's rewrite this down here. We're gonna put negative two times the quantity, 125 X cubed. 125 is what? It's five cubed, X cubed is X, cubed. So let's write 5x and that is going to be cubed. Then plus you have 64. 64 is what? It's 4 cubed. 4 cubed. All right. So how do we take this part right here, which is the sum of cubes and factor it? Let's put our negative 2 out in front and then we know we're going to have a binomial and a trinomial. So hopefully you can remember that. So remember, it was, the first sign is the same. So this will be plus, 
The second sign you see is flipped. So that means this one's going to be minus, and the last one is always plus. Now, this position here and here is going to match this and this, right? So it's just 5x and it's 4. So that's easy to remember. This position here and here, it's going to be the first position squared and the last position squared. So 5x squared would be 25x squared. Then 4 squared would be 16. So that's done. The middle part is just this times this. 5x times 4 would be 20x. So what we end up with is negative 2 times the quantity 5x plus 4 times the quantity 25x squared minus 20x plus 16. All right, for the next one, I have 8x to the 6th power plus 1. So do I have a perfect cube here? Do I have a perfect cube here? Well, yeah, 8 is 2 cubed. Then x to the 6th power I could write as x squared cubed. So let's put this all in parentheses and raise it to the third power. And then we have plus, we have one, which is a perfect cube, right? One to the third power is just one. So now that I have this in this format, I can factor it very easily. I know that, again, let's set up our parentheses. So I've got a binomial here and a trinomial here. So I know this position and this position is very easy. It's the first goes first, last goes last. So I have 2x squared and I have one. Very simple. Now, what sign do I want? Remember, if this is plus, the first sign is the same, the second sign is different. So plus, minus, the last sign is always plus. Very easy way to remember that. Now, what goes here and here? Well, it's this squared, the first thing squared goes in the first position. So if I squared two, I'd have four. If I squared x squared, x would say the same, two times two is four. So this is four x to the fourth power. So then the same thing goes here. I want one squared. One squared is just one. Now, what goes in the middle is this times this. 2x squared times one is just 2x squared. So I end up with a quantity 2x squared plus one times the quantity 4x to the fourth power minus 2x squared plus one. All right, let's take a look at one final problem. So we have m to the ninth power minus 343. So m to the ninth power, that's easy. I could write that as m cubed cubed. All right, all I have to do with exponents, if I look at an exponent of 9, and I want to have something cubed, just divide 9 by 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3. Because I know when I use my rules of exponents, if I raise a power to another power, I'm multiplying. So I can just say, well, if I'm taking m cubed, and I raise it to the third power, m stays the same, 3 times 3 is 9. Then minus. And then what about 343? Well, that's going to be 7 cubed. So I've got the difference of 2 cubes. So what I'm going to do, again, let's set this up. You've got a binomial, and then you've got a trinomial. The first sign is the same. The second sign is different. And the last sign is always positive. So the first position of each is easy. I want the first position here to be the first position here. I want the second position or the last position here to be the last position here. So that's done. Then I want to take the first thing and square it. m cubed squared is m to the sixth power. Then what's going to go here, I'm going to take the last thing and square it. 7 squared is 49. In the middle, I multiply the two together. So m cubed times 7 is 7m cubed. So I end up with a quantity m cubed minus 7 times the quantity m to the sixth power plus 7m cubed plus 49. 